I analyzed every single shot from Darwin Nunes this season and found out whether he is good or not. This image shows all 112 shots that I've watched and it's key to everything that I'm about to reveal. So straight out of the bat, we're gonna look at the finish against Brentford, also known as shot 112, because this goal is more than just a goal because it tells us a few different things about Darwin Nunez, which we're going to go through in this video. Because the 78 shots that I've just watched, they really, really opened my eyes on Darwin Nunez. He gets the ball about 45 yards away from goal. There he is. And he instantly looks up, which tells him what? How much time he has. That is often a problem for players who have to think about it too much. But let me show you the brilliance of what he does next. So there are two mistakes that Premier League players make all the time here that Darwin Nunes doesn't. The first is that he doesn't continue his trajectory in a straight line towards the goalkeeper. Running straight towards the goalkeeper... It makes it very hard to slot it either side of him, whilst also making it easier for goalkeepers to close down the space. The second thing that Nunes does is that he makes his mind up early. By getting his head up early, that really, really helps. And he knows he isn't going to square it, which eliminates that option from his train of thought. It gives him clarity over what he wants and needs to do next. Now, look closely at this next freeze frame. And you can see that Darwin Nunes's body shape is slightly to the right. That's really, really important because it means that he can go to the goalkeeper's left or right. And because he's made this decision early and the goalkeeper now is in absolute no man's land making it easy for him to simply lob which I mean isn't simple and is wild that his brain even goes to that place but that is kind of part of the fun and that's actually why I really want to do this video as well because Darwin Nunes is so much fun and I think we've all been concerned with him being brilliant but you've got to enjoy him you have to enjoy him. Now, the importance in emphasising this is because he's made that decision early. There is now an equal distance between Darwin Nunes and the goal. And that's really important to say here as well, because this means that a chip can go over the goalkeeper, even with him standing and at full stretch. And he still has enough space to drop the ball back down in time to find the goal. That said, the technique is, is wild. Another wild thing about this is that it's been Nunez's biggest criticism. Often people say he's better when he doesn't have time to think about the shot and takes it instinctively. But that's not the case this time and he does everything perfectly. Is that just down to confidence or is he developing as a player? Well, let's have a look at shot 108 to find out a little bit more. Now this one starts off with Trent playing a curved ball in behind Chelsea's back line and it's not too dissimilar to the Brentford scenario however there are more defenders back in this case what Nunes does really well is that he doesn't telegraph to the direction of his rung his goal is to get in behind the space behind Badia Shile but he does it in a really really clever way and his initial body shape suggests that he's making a straight run towards the box this is good because it makes him harder to track and it buys him time to get a shot away as you can see in the next screenshot so he's got him behind which is fantastic and he's used his movement brilliantly and all those physical aspects that he has but it's the shot in fact that is the problem here because if we move it on one more you can see that Nunez has left Badashiel for dead and if he can get the ball under control there's a good chance for a hard low shot across goal before Petrovic has time to set himself up but he doesn't do that and instead he goes for a premature chip. The problem with the shot is that actually what was good about the previous shot. Nunes made his mind up early, but this time he gets it wrong due to the positioning of the goalkeeper who isn't far enough off his line to catch out. The other problem is that Nunes lets the ball bounce, meaning that he has to get the ball under control to chip him, which affects the speed in which he can chip or how it will chip. And it, it means it, it doesn't really travel at the speed fast enough to get it up and over the goalkeeper before he has time to react. But in the fast-paced world of being a Premier League forward, is this unlucky or is there a common theme at play here? Because I think the criticism of him is sometimes that he's good at football, but not a good football player. Or he's a good forward, but not a great striker. But I think this next clip may dispel that theory. Now, this is a huge insight into Nunez really improving his off-the-ball work as a striker over the last... 12 months. So here we have shot 92, which came against Bournemouth. And it starts here with Curtis Jones on the ball. And Darwin Nunes is right here. He's up front. He's holding the line up well, which is a bit easier to do because you've got other players at play kind of pushing it back as well. But that is one great strength that he always has is that he is always staying on that last man, which 
creates a lot of space in here actually a lot of the time but that's another video what i want you to keep in mind here is darwin nunez's body language because there are two things that shows quality for me here and development from him and the first is that he's always looking at the ball and he's aware of what's going on but the most important thing here is that he's doing it without entirely turning his back on the goal meaning he's always ready to take a shot a striker who was fantastic at that was Sergio Aguero <laughs> yeah that's right I'm comparing him to Sergio Aguero and what the ball then gets played to Jota on the right hand side and what Darwin Nunes does fantastically here is that he's sort of ball watching to a sense but it's uh, aligned with or married with proactive movement so he keeps an eye on the ball yes he's got his back to goal but literally for half a second because he, he allows him to have a better understanding of the space in between him and his defenders but also creating a passing lane for himself it's instinctual in terms of his movement but it's also a desire i think to stay centrally for two reasons one for himself to get a better chance and we'll talk about that in terms of his xg later in the video but also to help out his teammate to give him that space to go himself if he needs to and to make life difficult for Mepham right here. If we move it on one more, we can see that he actually creates the passing lane for himself as well by having that understanding, watching the ball, not just spinning and going to an area, really understanding the space. Jota finds him brilliantly and then he's in and he's in in a central area. But crucially, he's made sure that he's facing the goal as much as possible and it means that he can hit the ball first time and really open his body to do so. And he scores due to being able to sweep it into that bottom right corner straight away, which is really, really impressive. What I will say, however, is that, look, his stance isn't amazing here. It's He's having to sort of do it off the cuff. And, you know, when we think of the chaos of him and maybe the confidence of him as well, look, his gate is quite open, which means that a shot across the goal is very difficult, if not impossible to execute. It means that the bottom right is the only option here, and it's a difficult one for him as well. And maybe a better goalkeeper reads that and guesses the right way. And also, it might be one where on a on a less confident day, Darwin Nunes doesn't finish that chance because he's not totally got his feet in the right place. But the basics are there. Like the desire to face the goal so he can get his shot off quickly again is there. And that is good forward play. And maybe this is down to the fact that, OK, on a technical level, he's not at the same fluency of a Robbie Fowler, let's say, in terms of that composure. But he is always thinking of goals and always of thinking of facing the goal and always desperate to get his shot off. But Nunes gets the shot off first time, which doesn't allow the goalkeeper time to think about this. But it's something to consider. So this shot map that we showed you at the start of the video wasn't exactly what you may have thought it was to begin with, because this shot map is actually all of his goals or misses from 2022 to now. So not just this season. So last season, he had a conversion rate of 11%. And this season, it's not hugely better. It's 12%. But sometimes numbers don't tell you the full story, as we're going to demonstrate right now. So look what happens when you filter it to just this season. Can you see the difference? The difference here is that his shots are coming from more central positions. And the low XG shots are displayed by the size of the circles that aren't as prominent in the wide areas. Now, I know last season he was playing as a winger at times. However, he's done that at times this season too. And the overarching point here is that he's moving into better positions. He is refining himself. And the stats back him up on this. Last season, 41.7% of his shots were on target. But this season, it's up to 44.9%. This shows that he's learning the position and there's a reason as to why the goals have started to come more frequently the more time passes. And we may have pinpointed the exact game in which he started to show the signs of this. But next we have to talk about a potential weakness that he may have when it comes to finishing a specific type of chance. So there are actually a few different examples of the problem that we're about to show you here. So this is shot 41 in a game against Sheffield United. This shot didn't go in for these reasons. But first we need to take it back a few steps to this point. Now... The reason that this freeze frame is important is because this is the moment that Nunes gets his head up to see where the goalkeeper is. This part of the finish is okay, as he has enough time to sort of analyse the situation. But the part which is a problem is this. It's where the ball is. The ball is a little bit too close to his feet. And so that means, despite looking up, it means that he requires an extra touch. He's going to have to look down, have that extra touch to get a shot off effectively and strike through the ball. And that's exactly what happens. If we move it on one more, you can see that he has to do that. And therefore, his shot is taken a little bit closer. And you can notice by this point that the goalkeeper has read that as well. So the distance between the goalkeeper and 
Nunez is a lot shorter than in previous finishes and it makes it a lot tougher to slot it past Fodering. Here Nunez has the same problem but it is manifested in the opposite way but it all stems from the same issue which we're going to show you now. But before I do, Nunez took a total of nine shots in this game against Luton and the XG was 0.9. Most of these shots were long range attempts as you can see in the shot map, but this shot here is by far the most important one as we attempt to answer the question, is he good? So this is the great chance that Darwin Nunez has and Mo Salah plays the pass, it's a well weighted pass, but as we move it on, you'll see there are two reasons, two big reasons why Darwin Nunez shouldn't have shot here and it's what stopped it from being a goal for him. Now, the first problem is the shot distance. The shot is taken from about 16 yards away from goal, and it has to be incredibly accurate into the far right corner, as the goalkeeper, importantly, is still pretty close to his line. So he's going to be able to deal with everything to his near post. And Darwin Nunes, in the end, just hits it as hard as he can, and it goes straight down the throat of the goalkeeper. Not literally. That'd be wild. And as I've slightly alluded to, the second problem is his awareness of the goalkeeper. If he didn't hit the ball first time, Time, he probably would have had time to get his head up and check where the goalkeeper is and realise that he's rooted to his line, which would give him an easier decision as to which type of shot he should take and maybe just pass it into the corner. But the thing that you may have missed from both of these previous shots is that both of these shots were taken from angles. Let's refer back to his shot map this season. So most of his goals have come from central areas and he's doing well to pick up these positions. But the problem is that his wide finishing is letting him down. However, I don't think it's that much of a problem and I've got two reasons as to why he could possibly answer the question once and for all with the proof that backs it up. And the answer lays in these two green circles. Shots 16 and 17 came on the 27th of August this season, both of which were against Newcastle, and this could have been the game that first showed us the improvements made by Darwin Nunes. Now, this is the build-up to shot 16 in which he breaks through on goal with space to run into, and this is possibly the key to all of this. So this is an example, if we move it on one more, this is an example of Nunes getting everything right. Firstly, look where the ball is. Let's circle the ball here. There it is. The ball in relation to his body, it's at a great distance in which he can run onto it and strike it without having to break stride. Something we, of course, highlighted as a problem against Sheffield United. He's also aware of Nick Pope, who has taken a position close to his near post, which you can see here. So the point being made here is that he got everything right in this instance. His touch his goalkeeper awareness, and of course, the shot selection. And what happened next? You know I love doing this. You know I do. Here it comes. -da 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 -da. Goal. And then, of course, shot 17, the second goal for Darwin Nunes against Newcastle, which everyone thought was the exact same goal, but it wasn't very, very different. Because, yes, it's from a similar area. Yes, it's from a little bit wider. But importantly, the difference this time is whereas previously Pope was here, this time, of course, Pope has come out to meet him. And Darwin Nunes, again, gets everything right. He understands what to do. He allows the ball, he doesn't take an extra touch here, allows the ball to roll past him. And what he does, really, really importantly, as you can see, if we zoom in on Pope, is that he sees that Pope is on his heels. And so when he's on his heels, that's going to make it very, very difficult for him to get down to his left or his right quickly and react. So he's going to have to premeditate and guess. And he does, and he guesses wrong. And what happens? What happens, guys? Bloody scores again, doesn't he? Well done, Darwin. So is he good? Of course he's good. He's so much fun. And I think an important thing to say as well is that despite the conversion rate, we need to put that to one side now because, yes, Haaland has a much better conversion rate than someone like Darwin Nunes. But actually, the comparison that I made between these two is unfair because the style of play and the effectiveness of Darwin Nunes within this Liverpool side is so different but so necessary that it's very unfair to compare the two. Will he ever be as clinical as Haaland? Who knows? Does he have as much time to take his finishes? No. It's very, very high octane stuff and he's always running in behind. But he is getting better and better and he is going to be absolutely crucial, be it for his goals or his overall play between now and the end of the season if Liverpool are going to go win that title. And most importantly, he is just so much fun. But you would have already known that, of course, if you'd watched this video from the start of the season in which we predicted that Nunez would score 20 plus goals this season. I don't want to spoil it, so maybe just click on it.